Good morning. morning. Welcome to peace. Welcome to your Lord's house today. What a privilege to be here together, to be served by our Savior through his word, uh, to encourage one another. It really is a blessing to be here today. Today, as we gather around God's word, we're going to focus on uh, the theme of watching for our master's return. Uh, We all know, we confess it each week in our creed, that Jesus is going to come back. And so many thoughts can swirl around in our heads when we think about Jesus coming back. Even though we talk about it all the time and we know it ought to be a joyful thing, sometimes it it feels like it might be a little scary. But this is a good Sunday to, again, get into God's word, remember Jesus' promises, and and, and be reminded that it's it's not going to be a scary thing at all. This is going to be a blessing because Jesus is coming to do what he always does serve us with his grace for all eternity. So let's worship and joy today as we remember Jesus returning. Let's begin our today with our opening verses. They are taken from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. In his word I put my hope. More than watchers wait for the morning. My soul waits for the Lord. For with the Lord is faithful love, in him is complete redemption. We sing our first I invite you to stand. We have come into the presence of God. He created us to love and serve him as his dear children. And so we begin with a reminder of that blessing that we are his children as we remember our baptisms. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. In the presence of our holy God, we recognize our sinfulness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and ask for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and the innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give us strength to live according to his will. Amen. Let us praise the Lord.
Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We focus our hearts, our minds on the lessons from God's Word. Our first lesson, I think, is an interesting lesson because here we have one of God's prophets named Habakkuk who is openly complaining to the Lord in one of his prayers. And I find that interesting because I often want to do that, but I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that. And what Habakkuk is complaining about is the same thing that we complain about. Lord, you have these promises. I'm waiting for these promises, but I don't see them. And so he takes that to the Lord. And I think that's maybe the first lesson we can learn from this, is we can take those things to the Lord. But what we can especially learn as we listen to Habakkuk's complaint is what he did. He, he then stopped and he waited. And he looked again at God's promises, and he realized that God is always faithful to his promises. God always keeps his promises. And so we wait. We wait in hope, we wait in certainty, and we live by that faithfulness to his promises. A lesson from Habakkuk chapters 1 and 2. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what, his answer, I, and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel records the words and the works of our Savior, and so I invite you to stand in respect. What we just heard in Habakkuk can very much apply to the gospel lesson, because in the gospel lesson we hear Jesus talking about his return, about the last day, and we eagerly await for that. How long, or how many times have we prayed, come Lord Jesus, we're ready, we are ready, look at all the things that are going on around us. And yet, he promises, he will come. And so we patiently, confidently wait. This will also be our sermon text, so we'll talk about it further in just a few minutes. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 12. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message.
Good morning. Thanks for coming up here today. Get to hear about Jesus' love. What an exciting thing. You guys ever use the vacuum cleaner? No. no. Only grown-ups use it. What do you think about that, parents? I think it's time to learn. You want to learn how to use a vacuum? I won't make you vacuum today. But That's there okay. Can be a toy vacuum. There can be a toy vacuum. Yeah, you got to get training on it. So, if you probably need to, you're going to have to use the vacuum someday, right? I want you to think about when the vacuum comes out at your house. When are the, when are the times when the vacuum comes out at your house usually? Can you, why why would you vacuum? Can you think of any reasons why you'd vacuum? Okay, maybe use a mess and you, and you clean your house, right. So when you think about the vacuum and, and cleaning your house, what are times when you need to clean your house? When it gets very dirty, that's probably the biggest one. Does it ever come out like when company's coming over? Like we have grandpa and grandma coming over. We have friends coming over. Did mom and dad ever clean the house really frantically? Yeah, yep. That's, that's, yeah, that's when the vacuum really comes out and it really gets going, right? When guests are coming over, why? Why do we want to get the house all ready for guests to come over? That's right. You want everybody to see a nice, clean house and to, to be comfortable, right? And so all the things you do before that make you ready for the party, ready for your guests, right? That's what we're talking about today. We have a guest coming. Did you know that? Jesus. Yes, Jesus, right. Jesus not only came to earth and was born in the manger, he died on the cross, he went back to heaven, and what does he promise? He is coming back. Isn't that exciting? Jesus is coming back, so we get to see him, we get to be with him, we get to have his love forever. But you know what he says? He says, as, as you wait for me to come back, I want you to get ready. How do we get ready for Jesus? Is it by vacuuming? No. no. But it's kind of the same. When we get ready for guests, we prepare, we're busy. Jesus wants us to be busy in doing things while we're waiting for him. What kinds of things does he want us to do? Pray to him. Pray to him. Yeah, that's a good one. Can you think of any other ones? What is it? Praise him. Yeah, and your songs that you just sang today. Come to children's devotions, right? Uh, talk about him at home. What is that? Come to church? Absolutely. All of those things are kind of like vacuuming before the guests come home. They're getting your heart clean and ready, right? Jesus is doing work in your heart, taking all of your sins away, strengthening you, giving you love, and you are sharing his word with others. All of those activities are getting ready for Jesus. And so we don't have to be afraid of that day because we're ready. We are active in his love, in his word, and how God prepares us. So that's what we're talking about today. As we listen to the sermon in just a minute here, as we sing the rest of the songs, think about how, how we're getting ready for Jesus to come and we're really excited about it. Amen. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth, for loving us so much, to die on the cross and take our sins away. We thank you also for loving us so much that you are going to come back and take us to be with you forever in paradise, in heaven. Help us to always be active, praying, reading your word, coming to church, sharing your word, so that we are ready for your return. Amen. Thank you for coming up here. You can go back to your seats. continue with our next hymn that really talks about uh, the way we wait. We wait in serving God and serving others. We'll sing verses 1 through 4 uh, before the sermon, and then we'll sing verse 5 after the sermon.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's word for our focus is the gospel lesson that we just heard. Uh, Jesus teaching his disciples, teaching us about his return, about the last day. I can't tell you what a blessing it is to be standing here like this. And as I say that, I know there are some obvious reasons for that. Um, What a privilege of God's grace to be called to be a minister of the gospel. Uh, What grace to be with you, my dear friends, to be your pastor. All those things are, are certainly a blessing, but that's not exactly why I said that. It is a blessing to be standing here like this today. Because I have all my clothes on. They, they somewhat match. My hair's combed. And I look down here and I have a message prepared. And that may sound strange to you, but this isn't how it always goes on Saturday night during the night while I'm sleeping. See, ever since I've been a pastor, Saturday night sleep is not always the best because I always have this recurring dream, this recurring pastor nightmare. It looks exactly like this. You're all here. And I'm here too, but usually I'm back behind this little room here. And I'm looking out and I I just can't quite get everything on. I'm not ready. The pajamas are still on. Or you're all looking for the bulletins and there's nothing done. Or the worst part, the one that really keeps me up, is that it's, it's the sermon hymn, it's the last verse, and I'm thinking in my head, I don't know what I'm going to say. It's awful. It's the nightmare of, nightmare of not being ready, not being prepared. So it is a blessing to be standing here like this today. Any of you have any of those nightmares like that? Maybe at your work you have to give a presentation. You have that nightmare. Maybe it's uh, at school you have this test or this... Um, performance you have to do some kind of sport and you're thinking about the game you ever have those nightmares where you're just not prepared it's awful isn't it and if you've ever had that then when you are awake you do everything in your power so that you don't have to experience that nightmare in real life you do everything you can to do all the steps before that time to be ready right readiness is about what you do before the deadline As I've said many times already, today we're talking about Jesus' return. We're talking about the last day. And the same thing is true. If we've been coming to church more than just a few times now, you understand that Jesus will return. You know about that. You are aware of that. You read about it. You even confess it in the creeds. But you also know that just knowing it being aware of it, even just showing up for it, that doesn't make you ready unless we're talking about being ready for another nightmare scenario. What is readiness? Readiness is about the action you take before it happens. That's what we're going to see as we dig into Jesus' own words, his own teaching about his return in Luke chapter 12 here. Together, as we dive into these words, we want to discover what is Jesus' action plan for readiness. So let's see, how can we be ready for Jesus' return? As I prepare a sermon, a message, I I have a lot of tools available to me, but one very simple tool that's very useful is a thesaurus. You know, because a lot of times I'm, I'm saying many same things to you each week, but it's nice to say it in a different way, because maybe it mean, it brings more meaning. Well, Jesus must have used a thesaurus, or he probably didn't need it. He was like this walking thesaurus. Because as we look at Luke chapter 12, these five verses, Jesus is telling us the same thing over and over. He's saying, be ready, but he says it in five unique different ways. It's really cool. I I highlighted them here so you can see. First one is, be dressed and ready for service. Another one is, keep your lamps burning. Be like servants waiting. Or servants watching. And then finally he just says it. Be ready. You can't read through these words. His audience couldn't hear him for the first time and not know what he's talking about. It's pretty obvious 
how Jesus wants you to approach his return. He wants you to be ready. You got it. So, if we get it, why the synonym overkill here? I think it's because Jesus knows people. He knows people like me. He knows people like you. It's the same reason that the Department of Transportation has these big electronic signs on 36 and 70 that remind us things like this. Don't text and drive. Right? We know it's illegal to text and drive. We understand that it's dangerous to text and drive. So why do they keep telling us? Because we forget. Because we get distracted, literally, and those distractions can lead to death. So it's important, right? That's the reason Jesus is teaching us like this today, saying it over and over again in many different ways. He wants you to be ready. And what does that all mean? Well, look at the context. When you look at Jesus' words here, just these five verses, you can, you can get the idea that he wants you to be ready, but you don't really understand what the readiness means. And so we zoom out, we look at the whole chapter, and then we see what Jesus is talking about being ready. Just before this in Luke chapter 12, Jesus told this story, this teaching story, about a man, he was a farmer, and he, when it came to harvest time, he had this bumper crop, the bumper crop of all bumper crops. He, it was like winning the lottery. He had so much harvest that he had to build more and more barns. And that was okay. That was a blessing from God. But the problem in the story was he lost his focus. Instead of focusing on the Lord who had blessed him for these things, he focused on the stuff, the blessing itself. And and he said, all right, I have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. His focus was on this worldly stuff. And the irony of this story is he thought he was ready for the future. He didn't quite look far enough into the future because that night he died and he wasn't really ready for eternity because he was focused on the wrong stuff. And we call this parable the parable of the rich fool. I don't really like the name of that parable because anytime you put the word rich in front of it, I don't know about you, but I automatically go, oh yeah, that's them. <laughs> he, was, he is a fool. Not me, I'm not rich, right? But that's why Jesus continued the teaching, and that's why he gives us five different ways to say the same thing. No, you need to be ready too. You need to be ready. It's not just this rich fool. Can we ever get distracted? I think we can. When you look at what he's saying here, and being ready and being watching and waiting... It's so often, it's so easy to be distracted from doing those things. Have you ever had your sights set on the things that the world values and forget about the Lord? Have you ever just taken out your calendar and looked at it? Maybe rethought your budget and realized, maybe I am chasing after wealth and comfort and a life of ease so that I am prepared for this life. Have you ever just stopped to think how easily consumed you are with worry, with care, with stress? Well, then we're no different from that rich fool. We're distracted. And Jesus says readiness isn't about being distracted, it's about being alert. And by alert, he's saying having your focus on the right things. Have your focus on the right things. We can know about his return. We can be aware of it. We can confess it. But if our hearts, if our minds, if our eyes are ever focused on this world's kingdom and not on God, then we're not ready. We're distracted. And that kind of distraction is more deadly than texting and driving. You look in the front of your bulletin and and you see this guy. He's looking up in the sky. Right? And I, I pick that because I think it's interesting. Is that what we're supposed to look like then? Is that what alert looks like? Not even paying any attention to anything going on in the world. You're just looking up in the sky and waiting. You're alert? I don't think so. That's why Jesus goes on and he says, okay, now that you're alert, I want to tell you what I mean by being alert. He says, be dressed ready for service and keep 
your lamps burning, like servants waiting for the master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Maybe a little out of our cultural context to think about servants waiting for their master. To, so let me, let me explain it this way. If, if Natalie and I were going to invite you to dinner, would we be ready simply by writing that appointment on the calendar and knowing exactly the, the day and the time you're coming over? Not really. It's kind of like I talked about with the children and the children's devotion. No, being ready means that we're going to clean the house. We're going to buy the food. We're going to prepare the food. I used we, right? Yeah, we're going to prepare the food. Uh, the table's going to be set. Readiness is all about the actions that we take before you get there. Or think about a vacation. Is, is being ready for a vacation just the countdown, five more days and we get to leave? I always like to think so, but actually there's a lot of work that goes before that, right? The, the travel and the lodging need to be booked, the, ma the mail needs to be stopped, the, the bags need to be packed. Again, it's the action that takes place before that time. That's what Jesus is saying with these words. It, it's a key point. Readiness is as much about activity as it is about alertness. That's what he's saying here. The, the picture is... Picture the way you see people in the Jesus shows, in the movies, they're wearing these long robes. Well, you can't do a whole lot more than just walk around when you got a big long robe on. And so what they would do is they'd have the belt and they would tuck the robe into the belt so then they would be ready. Um, the Romans would do this in their tunics, tuck it in so they could run or fight. Uh, servants would do this when they're really getting down to business. We say roll up your sleeves, but they would say gird your loins. Pull the robe up. Tuck it into the belt. That's what Jesus is picturing here. The picture is of this, this household where the servants should be in their jammies because it's nighttime and everybody's sleeping, but no, they're not. They have their robes on. They have them tucked into their belt because they are going around the house, busying themselves in the wee hours of the night, just waiting for that first sound of the knock. And they can immediately open the door. They can take the master's coat. The coffee's on. The, the paper's ready. The the bed's made. All of this stuff is ready. It's not a last-minute cramming type of thing. They've been working this whole time. They are in a state of readiness. That's what this is all about. It's about the state of readiness here. And um, so what does that state of readiness look like for us? Again, let's back out. Look at the context. Right before this, after Jesus talks about the rich fool, these are the last words. Um, Do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. The pagan world chases after such things, and your Father knows that you need them. What are you to be doing? What are, what are you to be doing? Seek his kingdom. Seek his kingdom. So our state of readiness, our activity preparing for the Lord is seeking God's kingdom. Well, what does that look like? I feel like there are so many misunderstandings about Jesus' return in the last day. Some people think preparing is all about diving into obscure prophecies and trying to make it this code you have to decipher so you know the exact time, the exact date, um, and look out in the world happenings and try to pin everything on that. It's not about diving into some code. Seeking God's kingdom is about diving into the waters of your baptism. Living as a baptized child of God. Every day, drowning your sinful nature and your sinful urges in the waters of baptism. Rising every day to live a new life in Christ. Bearing his name to the world. I think so often people think that preparing for Jesus' return is about wearing this sandwich sign out on Pearl Street. The end is near! It's not about wearing words on a sign. It's about living God's word in your life. The children said it so beautifully. Being in God's word. Doing what you're doing right now. Meditating on it day and night. Letting it be the guide for your life. Resting in its forgiving comfort. It's about loving God and loving others. It's about serving God, serving others. I like... 
the way the hymn put it in verse 3, the hymn we just sang. Um, Cold water for the child, the gospel for a friend, forgiveness when they've been reviled, compassion without end. Living God's kingdom, that's readiness. That's, that is the alertness and the activity that he's talking about. Active alertness. I think it begs one more question, though. Okay, we're alert, we're active, we're doing the thing. For what? What are we waiting for? You've seen movies about end time. Is it getting ready to dodge that big asteroid? To run for all, you, for all you're worth from the, the natural disasters, the cataclysmic collapse of society? What are we getting ready for? Is it a scary thing? Look at Jesus' final words. Understand this. If the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. Okay, maybe that sounds a little scary. It's always been one, since I've been little, that's like my biggest fear is having someone break into your house at night. That sounds awful, right? Is that what Jesus is saying? Again, context. This is another way of Jesus saying, be ready. Um, just prepare yourself, and then you'll never be surprised, right? Besides, if Jesus was coming as a thief, there's only one thing he ever came to steal. It's your sin. It's your guilt. It's your death. It's your worry. It's your care. Yeah, he rips that right out of your hand, the hands that are gripping those things so tightly. He purifies it all with his innocence. He, he pays for it with his substitutionary death. He frees you from it with his resurrection to new, to new life. So this is not the scary thing. What is Jesus coming to do? This is the coolest part of the verse, in my opinion. Save it for last here. Remember he's telling us, get ready, tuck your robe in, be, a, be doing your, your service thing. Why? Because when he comes, he will dress himself to serve. He will have them, you, recline to the table. He will come and wait on them, you, Jesus is coming to do what he always does. To serve us with the gifts of his grace. Isn't that a cool picture of Jesus returning? He's coming with his robe tucked in his belt. Ready to pull out the chair for you. Sit you down, make sure you're comfortable. And just lavish on you all those things that you are so desperately seeking here. In doing it in such a way, in, 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 in more abundance than you could ever accomplish, than you could even imagine. That peace that you want in your life, safety, sense of belonging, satisfaction, love, health, happiness. Jesus serves you with that for all eternity. That's not scary. I can't wait for that. How about you? What a joy. What freedom. To go about this world knowing that Jesus is serving us now with his gospel. And so we get to serve one another. We get to serve and love him. And all the while, eagerly awaiting for him to serve us perfectly in heaven with his gifts of grace. just want to check one more time. This is real, right? Dressed. I did it. I, I did have a message for you. It's a good thing. That's the relief and the joy that you're going to have when Jesus comes back. It's not a scary thing. It's not a nightmare at all. As you actively and joyfully serve in God's kingdom, you can eagerly await to be served in his kingdom in eternity. So on that day, you can stand there and go, wow, it was truly a blessing to be standing here. Amen. May the God of all hope fill you with joy and with peace as you wait for him. Amen. Let's sing the final verse of In Those Who Know the King.
Let's declare our faith in our God. And to do that today, we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, in joy and in freedom, for all of our God has done for us, we bring him our offerings. If you brought an offering today, there's a plate in the back that you can place that in. There's also online opportunities. What a beautiful way to say thank you to God, to serve him, to serve each other, to serve our community with the gospel. May, be, may he be glorified with our thank offerings. At this time, maybe for a, a little time of, of meditation, and then also a time to, to connect, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking your connect card out of your bulletin, or there's a QR code, you can do that as well, if you'd rather do that, that electronically. Uh, maybe you can write a prayer request, or if you would like to, to meet for an opportunity of, of private ministry, I'd be happy to do that too. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to serve you in that way. You can place them in the offering plate in the back uh, as you leave. At this time, we bring our prayers to our Lord. Our, uh, we have one special prayer request. Um, Phil Lee's friend, Ethan, um, had a stroke this past week, and so we ask God to, to be with him um, as he is a, is he a father of three? Yeah, father of three. Uh, so um, we ask God to be with him and his family and uh, protect him and grant him healing. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Okay, I invite you to stand and bring our request to the Lord. Lord, we thank and praise you for your great power, for your great wisdom, for your great love for the opportunity to be in your house and to come before your throne of grace with our prayers, confident that you hear us. You alone, Lord, have the power to provide healing to those who are sick. We entrust to your care all who suffer from illness and disease. This morning we ask you especially to be with Ethan in his time of illness. If it is your will, restore his health quickly so that he may serve you with renewed strength and eagerness. Be with him and his family and help them to know the comfort of your promises. Uh, use all these things as you do everything in our life to bring us always closer to you, our dear Savior. Lord, every year as we set aside time to focus on your return and as we think about the last day, so many thoughts can swirl in our heads. And so often we are guided to our guilt and our shame and we become fearful of that day. Lord, we thank you for once again reminding us that you came to be our Savior, that you stole those things from us. You took them away forever with your cross and with your empty tomb. Help us to live in joy and freedom as we serve you, as we serve one another, as we grow in faith and godly living. 
And through that, Lord, make us prepared for that day so we are waiting eagerly and with joy to meet you, to be served in your heavenly kingdom forever. We pray all these things in your name, Savior, and we continue as you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing song. Good morning. Welcome again to all of you. What a privilege to be here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, my dear church family. I pray that God's word was uh, a blessing to you today, making you even more eager uh, to spend eternity with, with Jesus, but even, even now, eager to, to serve one another in love and to serve our God with everything that we do. 
Active alertness. Beautiful thing. A couple of announcements today. Uh, first one is just a big thank you. Um, a lot of work was done yesterday. Um, you maybe don't see it immediately, but if you like look around the fence, it's amazing. So a lot of, a lot of work was done in a short amount of time by a lot of people. So uh, thank you for doing that. Um, as always, a thank you for everybody who uh, puts effort into making Sunday mornings happen. So thank you for all your gifts, your time, your talents. Appreciate that. Uh, with that in mind, um, there's always opportunities for everybody to serve. Um, this morning there was some vacuuming being done, getting ready for everybody. Um, there was uh, different preparations made for, for snacks and things, and you can do that too. Um, if you're thinking about it, go ahead and just try something. Uh, put your name on the sign-up sheet in the back, and if you need help, if you need a, a mentor, if you want somebody to, to help, yeah, sign up in pairs or ask somebody who's currently signed up, you know, how does this all work? But um, it just takes a, takes a whole congregation to do ministry, and it's all important. So if you would, please just check that out today. Uh, Advent by candlelight, um, there's a lot of things that need to be done, or, um, yeah, so there's a lot of information about that in the back, and then also in a, in a handout, so, so check that out. Any, anybody want to stand up and, does anybody need to stand up and make an announcement about that, or just be aware? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's also fine to come and enjoy Advent by Candlelight. You don't have to sign up. So it's not like if you don't sign up, you can't enjoy it. Yeah, come. So, any other? Yes, please. Christmas crafting, two to four, November twentieth. Another one. Two things. Okay. High local Thanksgiving meeting after church, and then we're going to be in the Mad Dad Bed by candlelight. I think the same night as Advent by okay. candlelight. Okay. Okay. I'm going to repeat that with a microphone. Yeah. So um, Thanksgiving, we're going to have worship and a pie social. Uh, the email I have sent out the last couple of weeks, um, just kind of delete that as far as the calendar goes. The calendar on the website is right. So this week I'm going to make a big deal of the times were not right in my initial couple of emails. The service, I hate to say this out loud to make sure I'm right, uh, 6.30. The service is at 6.30. The Pi Social will follow. So it's a half hour difference. But so, so take a note of that. And then that following, when Advent by Candlelight is going on, we also have a a neat thing for the men, we're going to, was it Advent by Fire? By Firelight, so we're going to have a, like a, a fire at, at Jim Wood's house and have a devotion and fellowship too, so more information will be coming out about that. Any others? Okay, lots going on. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, God, go with you this week. May he bless you. Have a great week in your Lord. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Certainly staying close to our Savior through His gospel and word and sacraments is vital for all of us. But there are certain groups of people for whom that's harder to do in a traditional way. For those groups, Wells has various special ministries to keep them connected to Jesus, including to our brothers and sisters in the military. In a family where dad's deployment bags have been packed and ready to go for months, just in case, things can sometimes be uncertain and uneasy. Deployments are now much more contingency focused as we take a look at what's going on in the news with various countries around the world. Because for this Wells family just outside of Savannah, Georgia, dad could be sent overseas for months or even a year at a moment's notice forcing him to miss birthdays, holidays. He's even had to miss the birth of one of his children. There's been a lot of conversations with the kids because it changes daily, you know? Um, so just kind of 
being ready for anything. Michael Hefty has served in the United States Army for the last 16 years. Over that span of time, he's been deployed four times and assigned to 10 different duty stations. Most of those moves happening with his wife and children. There was a period where we moved four years in a row. Each duty station was just a year, and that, that was a little much. At the moment, the Hefty family is blessed with a Wells Church just half an hour away from home, providing regular opportunities to worship the Lord and study His Word with fellow believers, as well as strong Christian support during this time of uncertainty. But that hasn't always been the case. We have found personally that there is a big difference between live streaming and being able to meet in person and strengthen each other in the faith uh, through that fellowship and through being able to take communion together in person. And so, thankfully for the Heftees and hundreds of other Wells families in the military, stationed at home and abroad, Wells Ministry to the Military offers opportunities for Christian support. Our job, our responsibility to our military uh, families is just be there, just, just to be present, to listen, to reach out and not just assume that everything's okay, uh, especially when someone in the family deploys, that our congregations just rally around those people and, and support them. Wells Ministry to the Military works to provide service members and their families with resources in support of their spiritual welfare. In addition to print materials such as military-themed devotions and prayer booklets, the ministry also provides personal connections, whether that's to a Wells civilian chaplain or to a military contact pastor. And these are pastors that serve in, in congregations that are located near military installations without having that understanding myself from personal experience to know what it's like to be in the military and, and what are the ba best ways that we can serve them. Um, I think that's just helpful to have those resources and, you know, I don't have to figure it out myself. If a Wells member serving in the military reaches out to their local military contact pastor, there's a chance that the pastor might be able to come on base. There is one recruit in, in particular that followed the protocol exactly. And uh, so because of him, he's the one that, that got me on base uh, for, for the, the Lord's Supper. And through that one connection, me being on base that one time, has now opened up the door for me to lead a Lutheran service on base every Sunday. The isolation and other struggles that these families face can make something like a deployment even harder than it already is. And that's where the support of Wells Ministry to the military can be so important. Our pastor took Mike to drop him off because he knew I couldn't do it. Um, things like that, you know, just step, sorry, stepping in to some of those situations. It's really comforting to know that other Christians are supporting the family back home all deployed. It's important when the congregation just steps up and says, how's it going? You know, because sometimes you just need somebody to talk to that can share in your burdens. Without our faith, I, I don't know how our family would continue or our relationship, Katie and I's, would continue to stay strong. Uh, and even the conversation with the kids is they sometimes have been um, anxious, uh, very nervous or scared what might happen to dad on a certain deployment or what we might be training for. Uh, and, and I always remind them, like, the Lord's in control. We have comfort in that, and it doesn't matter, and, and God will watch over them afterwards regardless of what decision He makes. Our ministry to the military works hard to develop robust congregational ministry to military members and their families. Our goal is to provide people who protect our nation with the support of church family, and called workers who are sensitive to the stresses of military life. You can join this ministry by registering congregational service members at wells.net forward slash refer.
brothers, sisters, let us gladly give to God our all our best. Service hearty, thorough, honest, with a living love impressed. All our duty, all our striving, all our time to Him belong. Praise Him then with true devotion. Come before Him with a song. By His mercy, by His bounty, by the gift of Christ His Son. What great good. Lord, accept our service for the sake of Christ your Son. Though our hope abides now only in the righteousness He won. Bless and save us, help and guide us, watch to come. 